I feel, I feel devastated. devastated. The Dropout has just finished its eight episode run and we're going to be going over exactly what happened in real life versus what happened in the show, sharing some juicy information that came out just too late to be included in the series, what really happened in the aftermath of the article that was published by the Wall Street Journal written by John Carreyrou, and of course we're going to be going over exactly how the Theranos saga ended for everyone. Tyler, Erica, Christian Holmes, David Boyce, John Carreyrou, and of course the infamous Sonny Balwani and Elizabeth Holmes and we're going to be looking at just what exactly those two are up to today. I actually was a little bit disappointed by the dropout finale for two reasons and one was because I really think they could have gone 10 episodes with this a lot of what they did in the finale, and this is the second reason, is that they just rush everything at the end. And I feel as though if you didn't go into this knowing at least like a basic idea of what happened, it would have been a bit confusing. And the timeline, they very drastically altered it they they made everything happen at once and obviously it's it's entertainment they, they are going to play around with things and they did have for instance Sonny and Elizabeth turn on each other way earlier Elizabeth in here Elizabeth you bitch you bitch what are you going to do and we didn't really see what the fallout was for a lot of the the other people that were involved with all of this. I mean, they had basically Sunny and being banned from the lab industry and all of that happen, but there really was a whole other part to this because they would have you believe in the show that 2015, the article's published, and by 2016, like, they're done. But in reality... Theranos was around until 2018. In 2017, they still had hundreds of people working for them. Elizabeth stepped down and even tried to put in another CEO at one stage. That was like her last ditch effort. And really, CMS actually gave them a chance in the beginning. They didn't just go in and ban them. They actually wrote them a letter and told them, you know, try and fix this over the next 10 days. It was a pretty short window. But while all that was going on, that was in March, and they didn't end up banning them until July 2016, and Sunny didn't leave until May. I, I, I don't know. When they originally had this person come, the inspector, they still believed that they could hoodwink the regulators. We can build this business with software and JP and run circles around others and FDA by manipulating their game. We can market our lab and everything and people will talk about our finger stick without us talking about it. Yeah. Sonny is basically suggesting they game FDA regulations by marketing the Theranos lab as cutting edge without explicitly referring to finger stick testing. Elizabeth was disappointed that a public servant could wield so much power and she really still thought she could talk her way out of this. So over the course of basically the next two and a half, three years, Elizabeth absolutely just bald face lied in public and there's tons of video evidence of it, which I'm gonna be showing you today. Every time we use technology that is not commercially available. We have never used commercially available lab equipment for finger stick based tests. Every okay. finger stick test. I had yeah. underestimated her willingness to bald face lie in public on our turf. Because now. seeing those clips, knowing what we know now, it honestly is mind blowing. It was $9 billion company down to zero and your investors and your board members are reading those same things. It's probably the most important question I think anybody who's watching has about this. Does it work? Yes. You're confident in that. I am confident in that. A lot of what Elizabeth did up until this point was lies by omission, 
or she had people lie for her so by that I mean Elizabeth would have you know George Schultz and these investors and board members and she would bring them in and do the fake demonstration that we all know that she was doing and she would lie to those people there in Theranos telling them you know it's being used by the military and this and that and then those people would go out and tell the lies for her and a lot of what she did in public was lies by omission you'll hear her in some clips say oh it just means less blood I think we should show them the first ad that's going to run in Arizona it doesn't mention nanotainers or finger stick just less blood which I will make a big deal about being about butterfly and smaller needles. Instead of actually saying, you know, the nanotainer pinprick. So it is very interesting language and how she thought speaking this way would kind of get her out of everything that happened. But let's get into the details of the timeline and then we're going to go over what happened to to everyone, basically. So March 2016, CMS threatens to shut down Theranos. But in a scathing letter in March, CMS called her fixes insufficient and threatened not only to shut down her California lab, but ban homes from the industry altogether for at least two years. And at this stage, Elizabeth is on major offense, defense, everything. She is throwing everything at the media. I feel devastated uh, that we did not catch and fix these issues faster. And she's just absolutely bullface lying to everyone and saying the most ludicrous things like she was saying that the people in the Wall Street Journal that were quoted as sources that John Carrier was lying about them. Every single one of the sources that we spoke with who the journal had contacted told us that the statements that were being attributed to them were false or misleading. And she at this stage was threatening legal action against the Wall Street Journal and basically anyone who published anything about her. David Boyce and all the board members were still on her side. There are no issue a press release calling my reporting false and they were threatening us with litigation. The journalism here has been so bad, they deserve to be sued. Lawsuits rarely resolve issues. What's gonna resolve this issue is the science, the marketplace, the company is being successful in Arizona. And she was evoking this, it's cause I'm a woman. Yes, a woman does belong there. Well, you know me, I'm a fighter. And I've actually been promoting a hashtag on Twitter. Iron Sisters. Amelia Earhart, Margaret Thatcher, other great women in history. They're against me because I'm a woman. And she even discussed with David Boyce leaking to the press about her assault at Stanford to try and like drum up sympathy, which if she hasn't done enough to damage women in, in this industry, like I don't know what else she could possibly do at this stage. Jen. Elizabeth, a lot of young women looked up to you, especially in tech. What would you have to say to those young women? By May 2016, Sunny left and they dressed it up as a voluntary retirement. Elizabeth broke up with Sunny and fired him from the company. But she never lost her faith in the power of invention. June 2016, Elizabeth Holmes' net worth is revised to zero. That's got to hurt. And Walgreens ends the partnership. July 2016, Holmes is banned from the blood testing industry. And in August 2016, she thinks she has a workaround. So because she can't do blood testing anymore, Elizabeth pivots and says that she is going to be unveiling the mini lab and selling the mini labs, which is really just a different name for the Edisons and that is what she unveiled at a conference and was saying Theranos basically now just sold these instead of testing the actual blood themselves. So October 2016 is when the lawsuits start to roll in. 
Partner Fund sues Theranos for $96.1 million. November 2016, Walgreens sues them for the $140 million they sunk into the wellness centers. I feel, I feel devastated. devastated. April 2017, Arizona State sues Theranos on behalf of all the patients and Theranos ends up having to pay out a settlement to pretty much every patient that ever used the lab and they had voided the two years worth of tests. March 2018, the SEC charges Holmes and Balwani with an elaborate years-long fraud and this is where they've taken the or recreated the clips at the beginning of the show and the end with the blue background and when Elizabeth is interviewed in this she says I don't know over 600 times I I don't know specifically I'm I'm not sure Um, I, I don't know exactly I just don't know and they really nailed this scene in the show like how she looks and like her hair and everything they did a really good job with it may 2018 bad blood is published by john carreyrou and if you haven't read that book and you like this show you should really read it it is a great book and also the podcast that goes along with it. I have read Bad Blood an embarrassing amount of times and it's still a really great read. June 2018 is a big, big month because Holmes and Balwani are finally charged with wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud and also once she's charged, Holmes steps down as CEO and they put in a man named David Taylor as CEO, but it's way 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 too late for that know that elizabeth holmes is stepping down as the chief executive officer david taylor the company's general counsel has now been appointed the new chief executive officer and general counsel ms holmes though will remain with the company as the founder and chair of the board so- and just three months later in september 2018 Theranos is officially dissolved and no longer exists. Welcome back, everybody. Blood testing firm Theranos is formally dissolving, but that is not the final chapter in this story. The founder, Elizabeth Holmes, and another former executive await a criminal trial. So from June 2018 onwards, obviously, Holmes and Balwani are charged and they remain together being tried together until March 2020 and that's when the cases are split and of course we all know what happened in the beginning of 2020 so Holmes's trial was pushed and pushed and pushed and of course she did something that most people familiar with the case expected her to do which was get pregnant and everybody was just waiting for it so that's what happened so the trial was delayed again and finally by august 31st 2021 holmes went on trial for a final count of 11 indictments compromising seven for investors and four for patients and as i said before she was on trial for wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud and in the end she was found guilty on four charges four of the investor charges she was not found guilty on any of the patient charges and that was because the jury said she was just that one step removed because she was the ceo concerns the elizabeth holmes trial the verdict is in the disgraced theranos founder and ceo found guilty on four of 11 counts in her landmark silicon valley fraud case the jury reaching a verdict just moments ago after seven days of deliberations and a lot of people were disappointed with that because obviously billionaires losing money like boohoo crimea river but the people that their lives were at stake like but at least there was some justice so she was found guilty on three counts of wire fraud and one of the conspiracy to commit wire fraud Sonny's trial is going on right now as we speak and they are waiting until Sonny's trial is over to sentence elizabeth and Sonny, obviously as well 
So what happened to everyone and how did it all end? We did get, as I thought would happen, the little text on the screen because there obviously was no time to go into detail on what happened with everyone. And I'm going to start out with Christian Holmes because there's not really a lot known about him now. He was on the witness list for the trial so he couldn't attend like day to day but he could have attended the last days like the same thing with John Kerry Rue he was on the witness list and people think the lawyers and Elizabeth did that to like keep him out of the court but he could have gone at the end because obviously on on the last day it's like you're not going to be called when they're doing closing arguments so he was noticeably absent even though both her parents were there and her boyfriend and all that and pretty much all that's known about him is him is he lives in San Diego. One of his therabros was pretty instrumental in providing evidence and was one of the witnesses. So I don't know whether they're still friends or not or how Christian feels about what happened with his sister and everything. So it'd be pretty interesting to hear from him maybe, but I feel like he'll just not ever speak about it because he's not even really on social media. Erica Chung at the end, they said, you know, she has her own company, Ethics for Entrepreneurship, which she's obviously a very ethical person. The letter that prompted CMS to act came from Erica Chung. <laughs> you know, in the end for me, it was a bit of a mixed feeling. I was really excited because the truth finally got out, but then also a bit of sadness in the fact that um, you know, we all really wanted that project to succeed. And obviously she was extremely brave going up against this company with the best lawyers and all the money in the world. And she also testified in the trial and has really come out of this a well-deserved hero. Tyler Schultz also has his own company now. He never got an apology from his grandfather, but he did say he did the right thing and was proud of him. Have you been able to win your argument with your grandfather in terms of persuading him of the problems at Theranos? He said that he had no idea how much deception there was and that he was proud of me. One of the things that just very recently came out while the trial was on about George Schultz that I think it was too late for them to include this in the show and too late it's it's not in anything basically apart from John Carreyrou's Bad Blood podcast and that was although obviously George Schultz really liked Elizabeth and believed her it has recently come out that Elizabeth gifted George Schultz a huge amount of stock over 2 million shares which at Theranos peak it was valued at 17 dollars a share which all of the stock added together came out to about 50 million so it wasn't just that he believed in homes there was a significant significant amount of money on the line so think what you will about that david boyce as i've talked about before has previously represented harvey w and he lately represented the victims of Jay Epstein. So he, I've, I've seen him being interviewed or in the background when the victims are like speaking on the news and stuff. So I'm sure there's something going on there about trying to like, you know, put a good show on because he came out of this looking really, really bad. Henry Kissinger, George Schultz, and even David Boyce resigned from the board. And he really did some absolutely awful things to Tyler and Erica and was having them followed. And yeah, he, he did not come out of this looking good. Doctors are happy. Patients are happy. They're getting... Doctors and patients were not happy. The and Sunny, as I said, is on trial right now. It will be really interesting what happens at Sunny's trial and also what sentence he gets compared to Elizabeth and I'm definitely going to be watching very very closely so maybe around the sentencing if a pe enough people are interested I'll do a video about it but Sunny has pretty much laid low we get you know the snippets from the depositions and things like that but 
and him walking in and out of court but he never really says anything and he has laid pretty low after all of this has gone down obviously he says he's completely innocent and the one thing i will say about sunny is like he seems like a absolute human garbage but when it comes to him and elizabeth I will say that when you go through their text messages, which I, my last video, I have a link on there, but I'll include it here as well. So you can go and look if you want. Elizabeth was 100% like never seemed to think she was doing anything wrong. But there are many times that Sunny says to her, I don't like all this publicity. Like we need to sort this stuff out. Of the two, he does seem to have a smidgen of a conscience, whereas Holmes seemed to not have any conscience whatsoever. The tests that are offered are of the highest quality. We know what we're doing and we're very proud of it. Were there situations in which you uh, had to dilute blood samples? What the journal described that we take a sample, dilute it and put it on a commercial analyzer is inaccurate and that's not what we do. So there is like a modicum, modicum of tiny bit of respect there that at least he thought about it or had some sort of like Jiminy Cricket conscience moments because Elizabeth absolutely did not seem to have any. She was a zealot. And a zealot is such a believer, a true believer in what they're doing that they're blind to the reality of what's happening. Not for a moment do I believe that she lies in bed at night and thinks I was a swindler, I was a crook, I lied. And when it comes to Elizabeth, I mean, a lot of what they showed at the end was true. Her boyfriend and her really did go to Burning Man when the company was completely falling apart. A lot of people think it was heartless that you were partying at Burning Man when your company was closing its doors. And you'll see her a lot of the time, you know, going in and out of court or even interviewers have like found her walking around San Francisco and tried to interview her and she just never says anything at all. Wow. Hi, Elizabeth. I'm Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition. We'd like to know if you had an opportunity to watch the documentary about you. We found Holmes living in a luxury rental building with her fiancé, who is heir to a hotel fortune. So her trial was, was pushed several times due to COVID, as I said before, and then she got pregnant, so it was pushed again. Trial was, was really long, and she did end up testifying in her own defense, which most people expected who followed the case closely. Well, Lindsay, we've never seen this woman break a sweat, really, in public. And today on the stand, she fought back tears. Um, we've seen her as the most put-together individual, planning, it seems, preparing for everything that happens. This was a very, very different side of Elizabeth Holmes that the jurors saw today that we up until this point as the public have never seen in covering her story she was found guilty of criminal fraud on four counts and she took a huge risk going to trial but she seems to have tolerance for huge risk as what she did with theranos was take a huge risk that didn't obviously pay off in the long run She's not spoken out really at all since she was on trial. And when she was on trial, her defense were apparently calling people she hadn't spoken to since college, asking them to come to the trial, as she seems to have very few people around her outside her immediate family and her boyfriend. It seems she really doesn't have any friends. She's still living it up though, staying in one of the richest neighborhoods in America while she was on trial. She will serve time in prison, but how long? We don't know yet. And when she gets out, what will she do? Is she biding her time until she can become a director of a public company again? Or will she settle for enjoying her baby and her baby daddy's money? Maybe that is the greatest retribution for Holmes, to fade into obscurity and for her to remain the cautionary tale of greed. She reveled in the fame, attention, money, 
glitz and glamour and now she's facing prison and everyone knows she's a liar and a criminal missing out on precious early years with her son elizabeth holmes had the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and maybe that's the most fitting punishment of all if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. You can follow me on all of my social media. I also have a Patreon, a merch store, and a main channel. So check those out if it's something you're interested in. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.